California. You were born in California. Your business is in California. There are so many people moving out of, out of California. Is there is there a possibility you could be moving you and your business out of California? I don't know. Uh, Adiós, boys and girls. It's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview. Tonight, we're going to be talking with uh, Tony from Genrite. Uh, yes, again. I mean, I, I, I understand that it could be a mistake just doing it once, but if you come back, you kind of know what you're in for, right? For sure, for sure. <laughs> Tony is Alrighty. the founder. Yeah, Tony Alrighty. is the founder and president of Genrite Off Road, which is an American-made aftermarket Jeep parts company. Born and raised in California, he has uh, raced dirt bikes from the age of five. Background in machining and manufacturing, started Genrite Off Road in 2006, and is responsible for new product development. I mean. This is the boss. I mean, the, the president is still in charge of new product development. That that means something to me. Uh, he is also driven in the ultimate adventure and podium multiple times at King of the Hammers. Uh, that means you didn't come in first, right? I did not. I was 28 seconds away. <laughs> uh, no, that's something. That's something to be said. But, you know, got to give you a hard time about it. He is the <laughs> only person from the off-road industry to be invited to Jeep's private proving grounds in Michigan, I thought you couldn't talk about that. I thought that was part of the the understanding between you and Jeep that you couldn't. No, that's 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 all I can say. That's <laughs> all I can say is that I was there. Can be seen in person all over the country, wheeling or at Jeep events. And Tony, I got to say, you invited uh, me and the other Jeep Talk Show uh, team members and listeners that were at uh, EJS last year to come out and join you. And uh, as I mentioned, we were all scared because <laughs> you had such built rigs and there were so many built up rigs we were scared we weren't going to be able to make it we didn't want to be that those jeepers that got you know like oh well they can't they can't make it let's just leave them <laughs> <laughs> so i'm sorry we couldn't go with you but it was great to be invited of course anytime so uh, i gotta ask um now uh this this is gonna be one of the tough questions for you you are a Californian. You were born in California. Your business is in California. There are so many people moving out of, out of California. Is there is there a possibility you could be moving you and your business out of California? I don't know about that. You know, it's um, California's really kind of gotten a bad rap. It it is if you've ever been here. Oh, the weather's right. perfect. There's no yeah. bugs. You know, yeah. there's little or no humidity. Um, you're close to the beach, you're close to the mountains, you're close to the desert. Oh, it's got everything, yeah. It's got everything, right? But it, it also has all the politics that go with that, right? Because everybody's got their own agenda and what they want to protect or preserve. Yeah. Or but they can get away it. with it because it's such a neat state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, unfortunately, it's all the good people that are leaving. And we're getting left with all the turds. So I don't know. Oh, no. It's, it's just one of those things. You know? should, I, should I edit that part out? <laughs> care <laughs> cool so uh but uh, I, i'm sure that you, you understand what i'm talking about and i'm not being political one way or another it's just very expensive to be there and there seems to be so many things going on that are uh just negative to off-roaders besides us being a citizen uh yeah trail you know, it's, and yeah it's highly populated it's it's political in in nature right everybody has their thing and they're all fighting for it you know mm -hmm. um like you said it's expensive now one of the reasons we've decided to stay here is obviously that close proximity to um all the off-roading um is a big part of it but um this area was highly known in the late 80s and 90s for aerospace so right. many of the welders that we have are all aerospace guys and uh, that's where we get the super high quality. It looks like a machine on those welds, but it's actually a human. Yeah, no, I can understand that. Yeah, aerospace was big. Uh, of course, uh, I'm here in Texas and a lot of, uh, well, not, I want to say a lot of it, but a, a big aerospace company uh, or the space company has moved here from California. I mean, still the Tesla, I'm not Tesla, but uh, SpaceX still has offices in California. So uh, yeah, but that makes a lot of sense. I could well imagine because the, the standards necessary aerospace are very very high and it's great that, that they can find a job and uh and i mean it, it has to be kind of cool too for the welders to actually be able to get in a jeep where they couldn't really get into the airplane or whatever it is that they were building to fly it or travel to space this is actually something that they can get directly involved in yeah it's interesting you say that um just four weeks ago 
we actually had every single person from our company right down to the receptionist at the front desk go with us out wheeling. And uh, many of them, um, some of them have been with me for years, have never been in a Jeep. Everybody got to go. And um, we switched them around so that everybody ultimately got to ride with me too and uh, really experience the suspension, oh, you know, talk, knowledge. Did you scared the hell out of doing. somebody. You scared the hell out of somebody, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two people since then have bought Jeeps. So oh, I, I inspired some too. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to take you down the the Bronco Trail, uh, which sure. is, a, uh, it's almost like military intelligence. Those two things really don't go together. Sorry, Bronco. Right. But you know, I right. have to give you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the Jeep talk show. What do you want? That's right. Now, right. But specifically to Genrite, looking at your, your products, you have stuff for Jeeps. You have not included any Bronco stuff in there, which seems to be the thing to do these days for manufacturers. Uh, and especially aftermarket manufacturers. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But as a, a Jeep, somebody that's interested in Jeeps, me, and not interested in Ford Broncos, I mean, Ford for a truck for a, a tow rig, sure, that's a great choice. Uh, door so is a Ram. But I'm not interested in a Bronco. So you have got to have somebody there saying, hey, we need to make stuff for Broncos. So um, we, we do have uh, some of our better customers have switched over to Bronco just for something different. You know, mm -hmm. um, they've already come to me asking me to make Bronco parts. Lauren Healy called me, asked me to make Bronco parts. Um, the reality is, is, is we specialize in Jeeps. We live, eat and breed Jeeps. And um, we're, that's, that's what we're comfortable. And honestly, we're busy. So um, it's only those companies that aren't busy enough that are kind of, trying to expand in a Bronco to like keep their company going. We, right. we don't need that. We, we got, I have a, I have 92 new products in the pipeline just for Jeeps. Wow. So in that, that's everything from CJ, XJ, all the way up to TJ and JT, you know, like it's, it's, it's crazy how many different things we have going on. And I think you just recently saw too, that, I actually went backwards to my YJ. I, have, I got a little budget YJ that I built up and just took that on the Rubicon a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, so, I definitely saw that. I've been in a couple of your live videos asking questions. This last, <laughs> this last live that you did, I tried to do it on the up and up. Not no smart ass questions. <laughs> <laughs> where um, we were building the cage. Yeah, yeah, where you were talking yeah. about the cage. That was... Uh, yeah. Cages are just so cool, but we'll get into the YJ here in a minute. Okay. All right. So good. So no Bronco stuff. I mean, I love oh. what I'm hearing because I'm a Jeeper. I'm not a, a Bronco fan. I'm not a Subaru fan. Uh, I mean, I can enjoy those things. Uh, I mean, hell, I can enjoy a Prius for, for what it is. But it, when I'm th thinking off road, I think I'm, I'm not Toyota either. I'm thinking uh, Jeep. And, and, and I'm really glad to hear that's your position. Now, of course, things could always change. But right now, that's exactly what your position is. And I love it. And as an XJ owner, the first Jeep I ever bought, it was brand new 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ. It's out in the garage since I've got the Gladiator now, but it's out in the garage. It's not going anywhere as far as being sold. I, I love my XJ. So the first thing I do when I look at a site is, do they have any XJ parts? And boy, howdy, you got XJ parts. We do. We do. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. I like seeing that. Uh, I, I don't know that it's very profitable <laughs> because, huh, I mean, XJs are going up in price now. So, but back when they were like five to $700, it's hard to put a $700 or a $1,000 bumper on a $700 rig. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I was just in St. George yesterday mm -hmm. and um, on my drive back to Simi Valley, um, I saw a whole line of XJs that were loaded up with stuff on the roof. They were all going over landing. I mean, people were still having a ton of fun in those vehicles. And uh, there's nothing wrong with them, man. They oh, they no. did the the high output 4.0 in those things with the four-speed tranny. They were great. Yeah. I mean, I love mine, but uh, I have been spoiled by the Gladiator, especially seeing how I was able to drive all the way to Moab and all the way back. And it was uh, comfortable and luxury. And uh, I did Metal Masher, uh, Hell's Revenge, uh, several of the trails, and it did just fine. I mean, I, I do have a two and a half inch lift on it, so uh, I have modified it somewhat, but not uh, not wild or anything like that. So it's it's really nice to be able to get out there in comfort and get back home again. Yeah, is um, it a Rubicon too? 
No, no, no. I uh, <laughs> I can't afford a Rubicon. Uh, I got a <laughs> I, I got a Sport S with the Max Toe. So I've got the you know I've got the the the, the big axles on it, the forty fours that are. Well, from what I've been told and read, it's the the same Rubicon axles, just no lockers. So, sure. yeah. Okay. So, but boy, cool. it was great. It did a wonderful job out there uh, on uh, on everything that I drove. It was scary yeah. as hell at some points because it's a 2021. I don't want to scratch it. Right. Right. Yeah. I know. Well, I, I, I'm less I'm less concerned about scratching the Jeep as hearing from my wife. We can't have nice things. Why are you <laughs> taking this thing to go off road? You know, she loves it. She absolutely loves it. Um, yeah. so, uh, now I know you go to EJS, do you do it every year? Have you been there for gosh, I guess since 2006? Uh, yeah. So, you know, for over 20 years, I, I was going there, uh, before I even had gen, right. That, that was part of what like sucked me into wanting to do a Jeep parts company because I saw everything that was being offered out there and it was just a bunch of Frankenstein junk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, man, I, I know I can do a better job than this. And that's when I started. Gen Ray. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, that's interesting. Cause I was going to ask you, you, uh, you have machining manufacturing background. What was that in? It was that just uh, on your own or did you work for a company that you, uh, did this on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, I, I mean, it's, it, I think it's hard to make the jump from, uh, I can make parts to, and then having to figure everything out at the beginning. Yeah, so um, my my work experience is, is quite broad. So it started with, um, in high school, back, back when I was in high school, they still had metal shop. And mm -hmm. uh, I won the Industrial Arts Award for um, the most advanced in uh, metal shop. My uh, shop teacher was super impressed with what I was able to machine and build and um, so he, he nominated me for that and I won that, That's that cool. kind of inspired me to continue on with that. And, um, I've actually studied to be an engineer, but then kind of lost interest when I found out what an engineer actually makes after going to four years of school. <laughs> so I, uh, I went, I, I hired on as a salesperson for this, uh, machine tool company. Now, I didn't know what that meant. I, I, I thought it was like uh, selling tractors or something, but right. it's actually the machines that you make everything, you know, whether it's a, a specialized grinder or CNC mill or CNC lathe or, or some of these were manual machines too. Um, but because I'd been in the metal shop, I knew what all these tools were. And um, then as, as I got into that, CNC became more popular, which is computer numeric control. So basically automated, right? So you load the part in and it cuts everything. And um, that really took off. I learned a lot. I actually got to go um, to all different parts of this country and other countries to learn manufacturing. Um, and then when I came back, I was helping other American companies be more profitable and productive. And uh, then eventually um, started my own company. Now, back then, that was a long time ago. That was uh, in the mid 90s. And I started a, a company called Adventure Components, which is a mountain bike company. And uh, I, I did that. I, I actually ran a full machine shop and uh, we did everything um, in steel, aluminum. I mean, we were doing crazy stuff that was heat treated and anodized, and, you know, um, but we actually sold. 95% of it outside of the United States because everywhere else in the world, bicycles are transportation and here's the recreation. Right. So a little bit different. The other side of it was that I, that I learned through the process. I, I learned a whole bunch about business in that company um, was that uh, back then anyways, people that rode mountain bikes didn't really have any money. So people with Jeeps typically have a little bit more money. Yeah. So I'm sure it's close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think everybody, you know, takes it to the max, right? I mean, I guess it, it would be the equivalent of if you could afford to belong to a country club, then uh, you'd spend every dime or whatever on golf pro lessons and special clubs and maybe even a house right there at the country club and you'd still be broke, you know, so. Yeah, it's a, it's an addiction. It's a, it's an illness, yeah. but, it, but I mean, it's yeah. a lot better than doing drugs. Probably cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it is. Drugs it are is. probably and cheaper. <laughs> and you can take your family. So <laughs> drugs, you're only doing it yourself, right? Now you take yeah. the family. You know, I, and I just, I forgot, I was going to mention this earlier. I'm really surprised you had people, employees that had never been off road. I, I mean, I would think during the interview process, you would say, 
uh, or do you have you ever been off road? Uh, is it in a Jeep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that's great that you did that. Uh, I just yeah. thought it was so funny that you take them along. And then I remembered the, uh, the, the prior conversation we had about King of the Hammers and stuff. And I went, Oh, this guy's, he's got people quitting because there's, he's just scaring them. So yeah, uh, no, it actually was, was really cool because we would come up on a hill and they'd look at it and go, Whoa, Where what are we, we going now? Yeah. Like we can't make that. I'm like, no, no, just hang on. We, we got this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so that, it was pretty cool. And I bet you, I mean, I'm sure you do this uh, from time to time as far as see the look on people's faces when they were there first doing these things. But that's got to be the most fun is yes. to see in the I survived look. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and one of them was going to go by a side by side prior to riding oh, with me. No. And yeah. then after he rode with me, he's like, no way, I'm getting a JK. Like, I'm all in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there's a few states you can drive them on the road, but I want to, if, if I want to go off road, I also want to be able to go to, uh, down to, uh, the, the local drive through and get a frosty or something, you know, where I can't yeah. go the side by side. I mean, I got to yeah. trailer it up and take it someplace. I mean, it's fine if you like that sort of thing, but that's not for me. I'd just rather have a Jeep. Um, so anyway, you, you were doing the manufacturing, you, you ran a business and it, it strikes me that you have to be a, a good person and a bad person to work for. Because you can't be bullshitted about how long it's going to take to make this part, That's or it right. can't be done. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, get the hell out of the way. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> sometimes I have to do that, and and sometimes the employees even say to me, like they'll, they'll come over, they're all like talking, trying to figure out some problem, and I'll be like, oh, you just need a blah blah blah, and they'll, they'll be like, oh man, how did we not think of that? You know, yeah. Yeah. like Tony to the rescue again. You know. Yeah. How involved are you in the manufacturing process? Is it, uh, I mean, do you actually run the machine or are you, I know that you're extremely busy, if not just with the business, uh, going to all these destinations. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So this morning or, you know, typical um, day for me is we've got two sides of the business. We've got what we call the off-road side, which is the warehouse, the uh, sales office and production is all in that building. Then the other building is all of our R and D. That's where we make all of our gas tanks. That's where my studio is. Um, and it's where the race stuff is. So we do all of our builds over there. So that's the fun side. I got you. That's the fun side. <laughs> so I I'm responsible for the fun side, right? Cause I got to keep all those guys going. Those are our most expensive employees mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that they're focused, but they're also um, kind of like my right hand guys. Right. So when I come up and say, Hey, I've got this idea. I want to make this, for a YJ or a JK or a JL or whatever, um, I'll give them some ideas. Sometimes I actually have to make it and then go like, here, I need you to make like a lots of these and, and figure out how to fixture it, and, you know, make it so that the guys across the street on the other side can produce it. So, you know, production is a much different animal, right? Those guys are used to sticking a piece of metal this way, a piece of metal this way, they're welding together and they just need stuff to fit perfect and then come out of the jig and get the next ones in right mm -hmm. the guys on the development side you know they're thinking through everything along with myself to say okay is this install you know can we improve it down the road you know like so if we come up with an update can we can the people just update this piece or do they gotta like sell the jeep and get a new one you know because <laughs> they, they welded this one in you know right. so um there's lots of considerations and then I'm the one that also has my eyes on the horizon, right? So I'm the one saying, okay, I think, you know, the jail is going to take off or the Bronco is going to take off or whatever, you know, is going to be that hot item. And then we have to develop products for those. And then I'm also the one that sets the price point. So I'll say, okay, you know, um, we're going to develop this thing and it can't exceed this price. And then like you were just talking about, what I do is I back into the price. So I say, okay, that means you guys can only spend 15 minutes building this, mm. right? And a lot of the time they'll look yeah. at me and I'll go, 15 minutes, holy cow, Tony, like, how's that even? Well, I'll be like, don't worry, I got you, you know, and I'll show them. Um, you know, they, a lot of these guys are are younger guys, you know, some of them are in their 20s and 30s. And, um, you know, I've, I've got a lot more manufacturing experience, everything from, you know, CNC and robotic welding all the way to, you know, full manual. And um, over on the development side, I've got a whole slew of manual machines and I can literally go over there and make anything I want, right? It's those machines are 
are not taken for production. They're dedicated to R&D. And a lot of the time I'll go over there and make parts for Jordan's race car or make parts for my old race car or make parts for my Jeep. Um, you know, one-off stuff that I'm like, hey, I want to try this. You know, I don't like this, you know, pulley or this fit or whatever it is. Um, we've got some brand new stuff on my JL that I just took to Trail Hero that, um, you know, I was literally testing while we were there. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's great for me to be able to make that stuff, put it on and go, okay, you know, let's show it to a few people. Well, I think it's so important too, because you're a Jeeper and you go off road and you do things so you can see exactly what this part did and make modifications because it's that's like, right. well, that didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. I just need to do that's that. Exactly. It, so this is what, what we're getting to right now is absolutely the difference of what separates Genrite from every other company out there mm -hmm. is that I'm the one out there. Most companies are worried about the color box that the thing comes in and their, their price point with, you know, to, to be a bit against TerraFlex and, rock crawler and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. I don't care about any of that. I'm, I'm making the best possible thing. That's all I care about. I like that. I mean, I hate to, to plug the Jeep talk show, but that's, that's what I, I, what I try to do here is I just try to make the show the best damn show I can not compared to anybody else. Uh, I yep. mean, and the way I look at it is, is somebody has a better show than they deserve to have the audience, uh, yeah. but, you know? So that, that's, I was, I, like I was that. taught a long time ago, whatever you're going to do, you better be the best. Like that's, uh, otherwise you're just wasting your time. Exactly. So if, if you decide to do a talk show or play the trumpet or be an off-roader, I mean, that's, you just got to be the best at it. There was a, a short flirtation with a stripping pole, but that I was just too fat for that. So, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, well, this, this sounds so cool. I'm so jealous. I, I mean, just the idea of you got your own shop there. I mean, I know there's a lot of uh, time and effort and money that's spent to get it, but when you want to build something, it's like, well, let's go over there and do this. And <laughs> yeah. And if it turns yeah. out good, you actually can sell it. And that that's just so neat. It's so neat it to have customers. It's like listeners. It's so cool to have somebody that wants to give you money for something that you came up with. It's, it's amazing. Well, it's got to be good. I mean, it's it certainly, you know, the, the consumers are a lot smarter than they used to be. And, <laughs> um, you know, typically when I come out with something, I'm, I'm really talking to their um, sense of what's right. So, for instance, you know, we just came out with a brand new inner fender for the JL and the JT. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a ton of heat under that hood. Well, everybody in the industry makes this little inner fender that's all aluminum with their logo stamped in it. Well, no heat's getting out of that thing. So you want to see my new ones, man. They're giant open mesh, just like they're, they're protecting all the wire harnesses and everything in there, in there, but man, the heat is just pouring out. So um, yeah, we've, we've really made some, some great progress in these things. So, and draw so, my underhood temperatures a lot. So I got to ask you, uh, what is your fascination with aluminum? I remember when I was looking at bumpers uh, for the the Gladiator. I love your bumpers, absolutely. I mean, especially the the front bumper, that uh, stubby bumper, that really yep. nice design. I really liked it, uh, but it was aluminum and got awful expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So aluminum, you know, not only is it lightweight, mm -hmm. um, it it is strong if it's built the right way, right? Um, and it won't rust. You know, and for a lot of the areas in the country, that's a huge thing. Yeah, I guess so. So even though they powder coat stuff, it, you just see it bubbling underneath there. It's all crappy and nasty. Yeah, so. I, I learned a long time ago. Somebody, a manufacturer uh, that made some bumpers for my XJ, uh, told me, he goes, don't get it powder coated. Uh, rattle can it so that you can just touch it up after it gets scratched. And, and powder coat, I found out later doing these interviews, powder coating has to be done right. And if you don't do it right, it doesn't take rust for it to come off. Uh, right. So it, powder coating just seems like a dangerous thing to me. And that was one of the things I liked about your aluminum bumpers. It's plain. Yeah. Yeah, you just <laughs> leave it. And and if you want to fix it, you can literally take a file and sandpaper and then, you know, some scotch bright, and the thing will look like brand new. Well, I mean, and actually, if you have an aluminum stubby bumper, uh, you might want to run some clear coat over it, maybe. But you don't want to do anything to it because you want everybody to go, look, I got an aluminum bumper. <laughs> And look at those welds. You know, they're beautiful. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know anything about welding, but uh, I can appreciate nice, clean uh, welds. And it's just, I mean, when somebody does a really good job, it really shows off. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can tell that's important to you as well. All right, let's talk about the YJ. I was a little surprised about the YJ. 
Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things, um, eh, uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll go in the right direction. I have this other question I want to ask you about uh, from one of your lives. Um, but uh, why the YJ? It seems like, um, it, seems, it seems counterintuitive because everybody's buying the new stuff and you, you sell things for the new stuff. What got you to do the YJ? Okay, so a um, couple of things. You know, one is don't forget that we still sell products all the way back to the CJ5. Absolutely. And uh, we're one of the few companies that even makes stuff for those older Jeeps, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the, the the CJ and the YJ have long been forgotten by the majority of the industry, yes. if not all of them. And the TJ is already on that cusp, and a lot of them have already dropped that. There's even companies dropping the JK. Like that, all they want to do is focus on the brand new stuff, the JL and the JT. It's crazy to me. So, um, so let's. That said, um, what happened was is I keep getting um, kind of um, snide comments is the best way to put it. <laughs> that that you know, oh yeah, you got to have a lot of money to you know um, have anything gen right, you know, blah blah blah. And um, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pick up a used Jeep and I'm going to build this entire thing for 10 grand. Now, granted, that doesn't include the labor. I did all the labor myself. Right. So right. if you took it to a shop, you'd have to pay for that. Right. But um, man, that, that little Jeep, if you put the money in the right spot, you know, when we're talking, you know, axles, lockers, you know, gears, the right spots. Right. Um, then you can, you too can go run a trail, an iconic trail like the Rubicon. And uh, that thing did so good. It, it just excelled out there. And it was, it was really fun. And I'll tell you, you know, like you mentioned, my yellow hat is kind of recognizable within the industry. Mm -hmm. And when people on the Rubicon, that they didn't know what, you know, they're not used to seeing me and something like that. Right. right. So as I rolled up and said hello to them and they realized it was me, <laughs> <laughs> they, they looked at me and they're like, what are you doing in this thing? I'm like, well, let me tell you, you know, I'm showing people you don't have to have a fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 vehicle. You can have a $10,000 vehicle. Yep. So, and then like you mentioned the show that you just watched the, our tech talk show, um, that show, what I'm doing now is taking that Jeep to the next level. So now I'm going to take the $10,000 Jeep and turn it into a $20,000 Jeep. Mm -hmm. And that's going to include a cage, um, Ram assist steering, uh, flat belly, you know, fenders, corners, you know, more, more stuff on it um, to kind of show people again, if you're going to go past that point, where's the right spot to spend the money? Cause they, they get all sidetracked in stupid stereos and light bars and crap that don't matter <laughs> at all. The stereos thing, it kills me when they well, see and, the you know, they spend a lot of money on that. I mean, you know, that's fine if that's what you like. But I mean, if it's an off-road Jeep, what are you doing? I always tell people you don't need a fancy stereo to listen to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and, and just in case it came off wrong, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great idea because exactly the reasons what you're talking about is everybody thinks that you got to have the new stuff. You don't. All you need yeah. is a Jeep. A yeah. Wrangler or a, a, a Gladiator or uh, even a Comanche. I mean, uh, the yeah. the original uh, or more more modern day uh, truck before the the Gladiator. So I mean, that's really all you need, and I think it's brilliant and it's great that you do this because I I would imagine you just loved it pulling up and people doing a double take. What are you What are you doing in this cheap Jeep? <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was really fun, and um, you know, it's actually inspired me to also. Um, once I'm done with the YJ, I'm going to build a TJ and I'm going to do our TJ to LJ stretch kit on it and um, just continue to show people that, you know, even if you want an LJ, you don't need to spend all that money. Find yourself a cheap TJ and you can you can do this stuff. I mean, it's amazing. You know, everything right down to the insurance and registration on that YJ is cheap. So um, it, it just all trickles down. Right. Um, the other thing I was going to tell you is I, th there was only two upgrades I didn't do before the Rubicon. And that one was a U-bolt flip kit where it does, you know, the U-bolts are face down at the ground. You, you oh, flip yeah. them over. And the second was a hand throttle. I wish I had installed a hand throttle. Those were, especially because it's a manual transmission, you know? So, um, but, but it was, it was a blast. It went through there. It, like a breeze and 
you know, it's certainly more smiles per gallon than anybody else out there. So. Give me just a second. Somebody's walking outside and the, uh, the dog's going off oh, on gotcha. the ladder. So that's uh, what you won't hear it. My wife and I get an argument about you yell at the dog to hush and she never hushes and she just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things, and, and I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but I'm, damn it, I want to ask. So one of the things you said on your last live, oh, first off, when do you have the lives and, and what is it on? Because I, I, I remember, I think it was the one before this last one, you guys had some audio issues with one of the, I think it was Facebook or something that the audio had problems. So you do it on multiple uh, social media platforms. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, that's a, <laughs> we're using a program on our laptop called OBS. Mm -hmm. And that thing is super finicky. It's powerful, but it's finicky. And um, what it what it requires is that we restart the entire computer and like clear the RAM oh. so that it can take over. Right. And that's all it was. We we the next morning we restarted the computer and did another test run, and yeah. it all worked fine. Kinda, so that's hard to do when the live event is going though. You know, yes, stand by yes. while we reboot the computer. No, that's yeah. not that's not happening. It's that's just, not going to happen. So yeah. everybody that was over on YouTube saw it just fine. It was the Facebook people that. Yeah, that's well, that's where I watch it is YouTube. So, uh, but uh, when when are these live events? Are they weekly? They are. So um, we do them every Wednesday at five p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's called Tech Talk with Tony. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously, Tony being me. And, uh, you know, it's funny because when I say it fast, it kind of sounds like TikTok, but it's Tech Talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and, and th this is a good point because I know from talking to you, it was either email or directly speaking to you because um, uh, I, I know you wanted to get on the roundtable to do the question and answer because it's really important to you that people understand how things work. I mean, they literally could use this information to start their own business and be a competitor. They're, generally, that's not going to happen. But you want you, you want to share that information with people. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, you know, there's I, I guess I wish um, somewhere that somebody had imparted that wisdom on me. I, I, I went to MIT mistakes I tried and uh, <laughs> it's it's been a rough road. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't mind helping other people out a little bit. So, and, and actually with this YJ build, it's kind of the same thing. The mistakes people may have made is by buying something new, they could have gone, saved a lot of money and it actually put money into the rig and making it a hell of a lot more off-road worthy, uh, and daily driver, uh, but, and saving a bunch of money along the, the, the way and not paying interest on it. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so the number one thing that happens at our shop, you know, the phones are ringing, right? right? So people call in and they're like, okay, Tony, what would you build? You know, if you were starting from scratch. So uh, that's a, that's an important question because I always tell them you pick up the cheapest Jeep you can and you put all the money in good parts. That, that is, I don't care whether you buy a CJ, a YJ, a TJ, a JK, you know, even if you, some people are finding, you know, uh, salvage title JLs, um, what, whatever you can. And then you put all the money in axles, you know, and, and Atlas and tires and wheels and good brakes. And, you know, there's, there's a lot, the, all that stuff's expensive shocks, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, th those are all important. So one thing I wanted to point out, you were, t we were talking about the YJ and parts making parts of the YJ. I went over to genright.com and uh, did a shop by vehicle and uh, went to the YJ and I'm looking a, a, at a page of parts and I'm noticing that uh, the count for the page, you know, the more pages that are there, it goes one through six. And I'm not sure it's just six pages because it maybe maybe it's more than six. This is what's showing up on there. So there's a lot of parts available. Oh, yeah. For YJ. Oh, yeah. It's not just, yeah. you know, a color <laughs> or this, that and these little things like you can get on Amazon. These these are real things that you can add to the YJ, including most most recently you talked about on your live a roll bar. Yeah. I thought that was interesting too, how you said on the live that, uh, well, you sure wish you had had this roll bar when you're on the Rubicon with that YJ. <laughs> yeah. I, I was nervous. I'll, I'll be honest. Cause I know that stock roll bar doesn't do anything. No. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when, when you're, it, it's been a long time since I've driven a leaf spring vehicle. Right. So they, they flex a little bit, but you get to that point where there's like a weight transfer and things can happen fast. So, um, 
you know, I, I was very cognizant not to get myself in that situation. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. I was running the little sluice, um, which has gotten deeper and more fun. Like it used to be originally. And I got to a point where at the very end, you got to climb this wall and then, you know, you're hoping the back tire hits this rock and the thing slides down. Well, right. if you don't get that just right, like say the tire misses that, then the whole thing's coming over right on the lid. So, um, and I, you know, I only know that from years of experience and mistakes as well. Right, so, right. Um, yeah, just, I, I guess I think ahead and know what the end result's going to be. So, mm -hmm. One thing but I was going to tell you um, yeah. with this YJ project, I was back at Jeep Beach and um, I was in the grocery store just getting a few things for the week while I was there. And this family came up to me and they said, hey, Tony, we got to tell you, you know, you working on that budget YJ we have a YJ that sat on the side yard of the house for years. And, and uh, we actually brought that thing out, wash it up and dusted it off. And, and we're working on it. Like you got us excited about, you know, taking our Jeep out. And I'm like, there you go. That's perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly that's what, what I'm trying right. to do right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and that's, I think that's the trap a lot of us get into. I mean, the bright, shiny new stuff is fun. And, and, it, and it's fun to just get in it and drive it and maybe make a few modifications on it. But, uh, I tell you what, when you see an older vehicle, especially like out at EJS, uh, doesn't even have to be heavily modified, just something that's one of the older vehicles out there. It really stands out. It's like, wow, yeah. this is cool. I remember these and I can do stuff in this. Uh, and they're doing this as well as uh, somebody in the big rig. Your, your yeah. JL build, is it a JL or a JLU? Uh, mine's a JLU and we've, you know, thrown away the factory frame and everything and put our brand right. new frame with long travel suspension, you know? So driving the shorter uh, YJ had to have been uh, fun. Uh, the oh, mobility yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, with, what I found was interesting was the things that I would have to try and get through with the longer wheelbase, the YJ would just like snake yes. right through, you know, I almost felt like I was driving a samurai, man. The thing was just tiny, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was cool. Well, my wife, we got, uh, we got an 03 of, oh gosh, by about 10 years ago, uh, TJ. And uh, it's just so fun. It's just so nimble, you know. Uh, it just—it's a lot of fun. So I'm—I'm I'm anxious to see what you do with the TJ as well, because uh, never had a YJ. Uh, we've got several listeners with uh, with YJs. I'll—I'll I'll do a shout out to Travis and his '89 YJ that he's had <laughs> since '89. Uh, wow. And, uh, yeah, big uh, big YJ fan. So uh, always think of uh, of, of Travis whenever he, we're talking YJs. Um, yeah, so another cool. thing that you said in that live, the most recent live, somebody had asked you a question because. Uh, the roll bar that you uh, that you have produced for the YJ, you have to weld it together. And you yes. asked, somebody had asked about what welder. Can you weld it up with a 120-volt welder? Yeah. And, and you said absolutely. And I thought that yeah. was a really critical thing uh, for, for a lot of people because it's like, well, I'd really like to have a cage. Uh, I mean, I, I, the, the cost of the cage is great, but I don't. it's going to cost me a lot of money to have somebody weld it up for me. And uh, it, it may be their first project. I mean, you might want to do a little welding on something else before a little test weld to learn how. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Get a few scraps and and work on welding them together. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you literally could put a cage in yourself for for just the cost of the cage, like like what you're talking about, where uh, you you did for the YJ, you did all the work yourself, and it's a great feeling to know that you when you've done something like that, it's a great feeling to know that you can do that. And it also tells you, has you learn a lot more about your Jeep. And then when you're off road or having problems with it, oh, that's not a big deal. I can continue on or, oh, I just need to do this. It helps with trail repairs. So this, that knowledge that you gain is big and it doesn't require a huge investment of a thousand dollar welding rig. No. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really nice. Um, you know, and trust me with your friends, you're going to become very popular once you have a welder. So it's worse than having a truck. <laughs> or, or moving. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> well, that's really cool. So uh, the YJ, you've got it to this level. Uh, it, it, what's your, uh, did you go specifically to the Rub Rubicon for the YJ or were you going anyway and thought, well, I'm gonna get the YJ out there. No, no. So that actually, when I started building it, that, that was the whole pitch was I'm going to show you guys that you can take a vehicle for 10 grand. And by the way, that included the price of the Jeep. So that's the Jeep and the parts, 10 grand oh, all man. in. You can't even buy a used Honda Civic for that. So, you know, we're, we're talking very affordable. 
mm-hmm. and um, run the Rubicon. And that because because everybody knows what the Rubicon is. If I said Moab, people would be like, well, you know, we, we've well, there's seen parts a, of, there's parts of Moab that really don't require anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what's the what's the popular large police vehicle? What, what, what do they use that? Um, oh, I'm brain farting on it as well. Um, but, but somebody took one of those through um, Hell's Revenge. And I yeah. was like, well, you know, OK, that's that's not a good measuring stick for how capable a Jeep is anymore. You know, well, did you oh, see the 40 foot limo that was out there uh, uh, at EGS? No. <laughs> Lifted and stuff. I mean, it's a huge, long stretched limo that was out there. I forget. I've watched some of the YouTube videos about it, but I saw it while I was out there and I went, what the hell is going on yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the Rubicon, you know, that's that's a, a better measuring stick. It's rocks, oh, sure. river crossings, you know, it's it's got it all, you know, so. So you go to a lot of different events across the country. What is the the, the most interesting event that you look forward to? Ooh, um, that's, that's a good one. Um, because like children, there's, you know, you can't name your favorite child. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. So, um, there, there's different aspects, right? So in the beginning of the season, it's Easter Jeep Safari, right? Moab also iconic, um, great traction, but, but, you know, when we go at Easter, it's, it can also be snow. Like it, you get a lot of weather when we go there. Then right after that is totally different dynamic vibe, customer, everything totally different, but also interesting, right? Um, then, you know, we go from there to, uh, well, and then I forgot about King of the Hammers. That's in there too, um, which is, you know, again, a, a totally different, but that's like Burning Man for gearheads, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, but But certainly also probably out of the reach of most people would be like, you know, saying I want to race Indy, you know, it's right. Very few people are going to be able to do that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I just came back from trail hero um, that that's uh, more like the hammers, but also will blend with Moab. So, um, you know, a lot more open, a lot more trails, a lot more variety. Um, before that was uh, Smoky mountain Jeep invasion. Um also, you know, uh, more like Jeep Beach, but but definitely more wheeling. Like th- those people are wheelers, right? Right. Um, and then uh, what, what did I do before that? I, man, the years are like a blur because I, in between all that, I was yeah. wheeling in different areas of the country. You know? oh, and designing parts and making sure everybody's doing their job. And yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I, guess so, it's, I guess it's a good thing that you actually go to these things because it gets you away from the day to day. It does. And... You know, um, I can also give my staff some feedback. So, for instance, you know, I, I get all the way to Michigan where a guy has just put our corner guards on. And he goes, hey, Tony, on the one side, when I went to mount the taillight, the holes were tapped. And on the other side, they weren't. And I'm like, ah, oh, no. OK, somebody's cutting corners back at the shop, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm able to get on the phone and relay that. And then I have the warehouse manager check all the corner guards in stock to make sure that all the holes are tapped. Absolutely. So, yeah, you know, it's just the way it is. But I was going to tell you, too, you know, those guys in the shop, I, I was telling you about the R&D side, right? Yes. But I walk through the warehouse and the production side as well and just just look over stuff, right? I'm just another set of eyes. I'm looking at how. If the welds look like they've got good penetration, I'm looking at how things are stacked. I'm looking at how many we made. I'm looking at, you know, how the bends are. How do they fit in the fixtures? Are they getting packaged correctly? Um, I'm I'm just, you know, QC because at the end of the day, I'm the one that everybody knows, right? I'm, right. I'm the one they're going to say, well, you know, Tony and Jen, right? You know, they're they're letting things slip. But well, you know, that's that's not what I want to do. I want to give people that, value. That's important. I like hearing that. That's that's uh. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't know and they don't take responsibility. And yes, you do both, yes. you know, and you yeah. take responsibility for it. I mean, well, I mean, you know, Genride isn't your name, but it's got you, it's basically you got your name on it and you want to make sure it's it's exactly what you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. Because I what I do is I tell everybody, hey, I'm using the same parts, right? Like the, those parts that we just shipped you are the exact same ones on my Jeep, you know, so I'm not doing the bait and switch up like a lot of people do. And um, all that's important to me, you know, yeah. I, I want people to know I've already, 
sorted through all this stuff. I'll give you another example. You know, I, a few years ago, I got a Harley and um, I took the Harley to Sturgis, right. Which is like, you know, Jeep yeah, beach. Or the thing beach to do, right. Park. And uh, man, you get there and it's like sensory overload. You're looking at all these companies that have boots and stuff. And I don't know who's good and who's not. Mm-hmm. Right. Some have brighter colors and shinier stuff. And, you know, you're, you're sitting there going, okay, well, they're all saying they're the best and they all have, you know, shiny stuff that looks like it bolts on your motorcycle, but I don't know them from anybody. Well, it's the exact same way when you first get into jeeping, right? So I want to make sure if they order something from Genride, and I'm I'm talking even something small, you know, like if you just order a front license plate holder for $29, I want to make sure that when you open that box, you know, you have a good experience from when you ordered it all the way to when you put it on your Jeep. And uh, that's that's important to me because if they don't have a good experience on that, they're never coming back. Right. Oh, they're, yeah, they're not going to yeah. buy suspension or a roll cage yeah. from me. No. no, absolutely. That's a good way of looking at it. You know, I don't know how popular forums are anymore. They used to be a lot bigger. Do you guys do any kind of um, uh, monitoring of forums uh, or uh, social media so that you can uh, get rid of people that maybe this didn't understand or they've got a problem that they haven't reported through normal channels? And uh, I mean, because you got to you get these people that are uh, keyboard warriors. And they, they just talk. So do you guys uh, do anything with that? Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that too, because um, it, if you get a happy customer, they never say anything. It's only the pissed <laughs> off ones. Right. So it's, it's just incredible. Um, and, and we, we do, you know, kind of keep an ear on the track, so to speak, to make mm-hmm. sure that none of that's, you know, uh, derailing, so to speak. Um we, 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 there's several of us, there's about five of us that are pretty active on the forums and stuff. So we're looking and listening uh, for the most part, knock on wood, you know, we've, we've done okay with um, a lot of bashing. So um, I'm, I'm going to say we're, we're staying on top of it and look, we're, we're human too. You know, the, the hardware is missing. They got the wrong hardware, you know, not enough hardware, right. Um the box, you know, got split open on the way, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, we, we try and over package. A lot of people comment and, and praise us for how well packaged our products are, but you know, that also adds the expense. Yeah, absolutely. And time investment in uh, somebody doing it. So damn it. Uh, I always have uh, so much fun talking to you. There's always great things to talk about. And I feel <laughs> like we've just scratched the surface. I do want to uh, mention that I see here on the, the YJ parts I mean, you have a uh, Atlas transfer case, you have a, a four L 84 speed automatic transmission, which I'm sure that these are deals that you've done with uh, other manufacturers that you sell yes. from your site. So, right. And, this, and these, these are, yeah, these are not on my budget YJ, but they're available right. for any YJ customer. Yeah, yes. Good point. But I mean, this yes. is kind of like a one-stop shop. So it you, is. you can go here and I mean, it's probably true for the other uh, other vehicles as well, but I'm specifically looking at the YJ since we were talking about that. Yeah. I mean, you've got Curry axles on here as well. So, uh, I mean, you can literally go to uh, genrite.com uh, and uh, look up your Jeep. Uh, I, I, although I don't see the Compass, the Renegade. Uh, what are the, some of the other ones? Oh, the new, uh, <laughs> the new Cherokee. So I look at that as a plus. <laughs> <laughs> I call those, I call, and, and you don't have to agree with this. I call them, uh, Ginos, uh, Jeep and name only. Uh, <laughs> oh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, you, you uh, know where that came from. Yeah. Uh, so this is, it's really nice. I really like this. And, uh, I, I, I wish I had gone ahead and got that aluminum bumper. Cause that would have been shiny and nice. You can actually polish the, the aluminum bumper. Can't you? You can. I mean, Some people I'm do. Not and, and, the chrome, but. And by the way, it's never too late. You can still sell whatever you have and still get a <laughs> very, very, very true. Uh, Tony, thank you very much. And now we've talked a little bit about social media, but you know how the kids like looking at pictures and stuff and uh, complaining online. Where can uh, people come complain online for you? On social media? <laughs> no complaints. If you have complaints, you know, like go somewhere else. Call us, but... <laughs> call us on the phone. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. If, if people have any trouble, we want to know about it, but. Um, our website is great, so uh, genright.com. And uh, on our website, we have, and, and you can check it out right now if you're on there, we have a smart search window. So if you type anything in that search window, a description of the part, part of the part number, anything, it'll pull up every single one that's related on our website. 
Oh, I like um, that. We also have a really good gallery. So you can go in there and see all the different builds with different size tires and different, you know, things on them to see what's possible for your model Jeep. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you could shop by vehicle and then it shows you exactly what we offer. And like you mentioned, what I did was I kind of flushed out um, all the BS products. So we only offer the good ones. You know, there there's plenty of other ones available. And um, I realize that people are on a budget or whatever, but but I, I think that they're coming to me to know, like, Tony, okay, I've already replaced that three times. I want to buy this for the last time. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I have on my site. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, in addition to that, um, of course, we're active on Instagram, Facebook. Um, we we do a little bit on TikTok, a little bit on uh, what's now called X Twitter. Right. Um, and then... Uh, what else? What else are we pretty active on? I know, you know, oh, and YouTube, of course, we do yeah. a lot of YouTube. Yeah. So, um, and Tech Talk has been very popular in that, by the way, is the only um, media that I know of where somebody in the public can deal directly live with the owner of the company. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, that is, and that's it's a big amazing. Oh, and, and kudos to you. Uh, you've actually spoiled me because whenever I go to interview somebody from a company, if it's not the president and owner, it's like, what the hell's going on here? I, you know, <laughs> if, if, if Tony Pellegrino can talk to me, why can't this, uh, <laughs> this other, uh, smock you know, do the same thing. So yeah, thank you yeah. very much for your, your time and attention to the Jeep talk show. We really appreciate it. And, uh, we have uh, several people, uh, Jeep talk show members and listeners that, uh, already understand the, uh, the gen right parts and are, are very happy with it fact we kind of get sick of them talking about it but that's another that's another story <laughs> <laughs> they love it they love your stuff so thank that's you good. so much for being with us and uh, we'll have to get you on a lot sooner than over a year uh oh and i forgot to mention if you want to go back and listen episode 660 was the roundtable episode that tony was on and episode 633 back in june of 2022 uh was a regular interview like this one uh, it was probably shorter but maybe it was longer i don't know you have to go check it out thank you again tony Yep. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on.